Here is how to sculpt a weapon in Blender. I'm trying to get better at sculpting, and one way to do that is to practice sculpting. Weird how that works. I started by drawing some concepts for weapons. Grand scheme of things, I want to make my own Space Marine Scout models, so I tried to keep light weight in mind. Then, I took a picture of it and set it to be the background in Blender. You can add a background to the scene with Shift plus A and then selecting Background. Then I made sure it was only visible in the orthographic view so I could rotate it and see how the model was coming along without an image to distract. I took a correctly sized model and scaled up the image to the gun. I use minis that I like as references. It can help a lot with sizing and can give you ideas on how you'd want to go about sculpting something. Just as a side note, I was informed that this style isn't technically sculpting, but rather box modeling. The more you know. Either way, I'm a big fan of the look it gives. If you're a fan of traditional sculpting, boy do I have news for you. Thanks to today's sponsor, Wingfox, you can learn from some really amazing sculptors. They have a buttload of awesome tutorials ranging from sculpting, software, game dev, film production, and more. Use the code in the description below to get money off at checkout. So if you see something interesting, you might as well give it a go. Huge thanks to Wingfox for reaching out. Anyway, I imported my first box, moved it into place in line with the picture, and then went into edit mode. From there, I turned on x-ray mode and moved vertices around. These sort of models go through a real ugly phase. You just gotta trust the process. I selected vertices and faces and used the inset tool to make sights and other indents. I also selected vertices and edges and gave them a bevel using the bevel tool. The bevel tool can create a lot of problems if you get too crazy with it. And I avoided a lot of these problems by going in and only selecting the edges I really wanted beveled. I made the bevel and copied the width amount shown in the bevel pop-up window. With that amount copied, I selected the mirrored edges on the other side, made a bevel, and pasted in the width amount I just copied. Be sure to select the mirrored vertices, because you can mess up mirroring if you don't do this. Don't underestimate simple shapes. Not everything needs to have an insane amount of detail. For example, the bolt is made with a rectangle with another rectangle jutting out, and these rails are just squares sitting on a flat rectangle. At 28mm scale, this is about all the detail you'll really need. Also, if you are sculpting for a game, low poly is a great style and a lot of detail comes from texturing anyways. To make the weapon barrel look hollow, I selected its front face and used the front face inset tool and resized it to the size I wanted the hole to be. I created a second, very small inset face and used the move tool to move the new face deeper into the barrel, creating a hollow barrel. The hole in the side of the barrel was made by using a boolean difference. I imported another cylinder mesh, scaled it, and moved it into place, the same size of the hole I want to create. I cut a hole in the barrel by applying a boolean modifier to the barrel. Then I selected the cylinder that I want to make the hole with, with the eyedropper, and made a cut in the barrel. The grooves in the magazine were made by making loop cuts with Ctrl plus R. Using the Inset Faces tool, and then moving the new inset faces inwards. 
I learned later that instead of meticulously selecting vertices, you can just use the Select Faces Selection mode, which is a lot easier and more accurate for making insets. For the trigger guard, I was trying to stretch a hoop mesh into the right shape and wasn't happy with the results. I sort of struggle with sculpting objects with holes in them, so I gave it a go here. Instead of a box mesh, I imported a plane. I rotated it 90 degrees and then created an inset face. Then I selected the new face and deleted it, creating a hole. Then I selected the whole object, pressed E to extrude, and honestly that was it. So that wasn't quite as hard as I was expecting. It's harder when there's an object that's more complex, so if you have any tips for me on that front, I'd love to hear it. I added little rivets by importing a sphere and turning on the snapping box. You can go to the little drop down and select snap to faces and change the point that it will snap to. I chose center. This is a fantastic way to quickly add things to objects. All I had to do to add more rivets was copy and paste and then drag the new one into place. I tweaked the placement of things, and the sculpting was done. Before you show it off to your mom or your friends, the last step is to check if your model has any issues. The biggie for 3D printing is if the model is non-manifold. To fix this, you can use the 3D Print add-on and check for issues. You should really be doing this periodically throughout the sculpting before you catch issues before they get too difficult to fix. In most cases, you'll just need to press the Make Manifold button and you're good to go. Now you can add a cool gun to your bits box. Here's me using a shotgun I made with the Anstronaut. You may need to scale and move some things to get it to fit right. And that's it! Feel free to like and subscribe if you found this useful. Comment down below with any feedback or suggestions. Alright, bye bye